All right, in this example, we're going to go over how to compute a Riemann sum, but we're not going to compute one single Riemann sum. We're going to show how you can do something that, that makes things flexible so you can compute a whole bunch of Riemann sums at once. So here's the example given this function f of x is equal to square root of x. On the interval, uh, x starts at 4 and goes up to 25. What is r sub n? So here, uh, by using this r, this r right there signifies that we're using the right endpoint rule. Um, the starting x value a is 4, the ending uh, x value b is 25. Um, so you could actually compute the width of the entire interval, 25 minus 4, or 21. Delta x is by formula b minus a over n, so you plug that in, you have 25 minus 4 over n. Now using this delta x, you can compute what r of n is. The formula for r of n uh, is the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of xi times delta x. This is just the formula. Now just plug in, right? So for f of xi, so all I'm going to do is copy the sum in right here, but for f of xi, uh, just f is square root, so you have square root of xi, and then for delta x, we'll just replace it with 21 over n. So you get something like that, and that's it. Okay, now take this, running out of room on this slide, I'm just going to copy rn is equal to this on the next slide. And that's right here. I've just highlighted the places where there's an n. Notice we haven't plugged in anything for n yet. We've waited to plug in, we haven't been provided an n, and the whole point of doing this, to wait and not plug in an n, is now if you're, if you're asked, okay, well what's r sub 4178? All you have to do is replace all the n's with 4178. And there's your formula for r of 4178, uh, very quick. Okay. And let's say you're asked for r sub 9999, same thing. You can just go here and replace all of these n's with 9999. So r sub 9999 is now just a sum of uh, 9999 terms which look like this. So just plugged in for each of these. So this is a very quick process. Now in order to finish this type of problem, there's one other thing. We need to find a nice way to quickly say what x sub i is. We'll talk about that. Um, but if, other than that aspect, this gives us a very quick way to compute any Riemann sum. Right? So you can plug in n early on, or you can just wait to plug in n. The whole point of waiting to plug in n is you might want to find r sub n for different values of n really quickly. All right, just as a couple remarks, uh, just remember that um, a is being used to denote the actual area under the curve, under the curve y is equal to root x from 4 to 25. And r sub 4178 is not equal to a, neither is r sub 9999. Neither of these things are equal to a. These all represent areas, but this is the area of 4,000 some rectangles. This is the area of 9,000 something rectangles. And that's not the same as the actual area, right? It's just that this area that you compute of these 4,000 or so rectangles, the sum of those rectangle areas, is approximately the area we're looking for. And an even better approximation is using this, these 9,999 rectangles. That's much closer to the area we're actually looking for. Okay, let's get a picture of all this stuff. So there's an app on the website called Approximating Area. I just already typed in the function that we have here is square root of x. Um, I also just typed in already the interval from 4 to 25. These should really be closed. Uh, it's not really such a big deal. Um, and right now you see three boxes. So this actually, the area, the sum of, look at the area of this red rectangle and the area of this rectangle and the area of this third rectangle. And you add up those areas and you'll get 87.9 something, something, something like this. And this is r sub 3. This number right there is r sub 3. But that's not the same as a. a is, look truly at this blue line, that's the graph of root x, and look under that, and only that area, that's a. And the area of the three rectangles is actually a little bit bigger than that, so this is approximate. And if you increase and use six rectangles, right, now the area of these six rectangles is a better approximation of the area under the curve. It's still not right. If you use 16 rectangles, then the area of the 16 rectangles all put together is 79.9, and this is a better approximation of the area under the blue curve, but it's still not right. And if you use 27 rectangles, so r sub 27 is equal to 79, and this is still not right, but it's getting closer, right? So you can look at the trend of these numbers. Now we're using 34 boxes, or 34 rectangles, or 34 subintervals, so r sub 34 is equal to 78.9217. And let's see how much we can push this thing r sub 46, there are 46 rectangles here, um, and the area of all 46 rectangles put together is 78.6.